I'm gonna start today's video off by blowing your mind. Right now, some guy named Larry, using 80 million dollars, is working on making a Tetris movie trilogy. Yeah, that game about falling blocks with no characters or story? We're getting a movie. No, three movies about it. Just why? How? I don't get it. What kind of world do we live in where someone has the capability to turn some falling pixels into a sci-fi trilogy like Star Wars or The Matrix? How does this get greenlit? How did anyone let this Larry guy into a studio? Can we remove him before he makes a heptology about the letter A? Hey, if anyone can do it, it's Larry. So I thought that was somewhat relevant to the film we're looking at in this video, cause silly old me used to think that the Sonic the Hedgehog movie was one of the weirdest things to come out of cinema. But the Tetris trilogy, really? Weird or not, you're the one making a video with a talking piece of cardboard. Well, hey, if you'd like, I could cut you out of the video, cause you're a paper product. That was really dark. I'm flagging this video. Sonic the Hedgehog, the movie, also known as Sonic the original video animation, which I guess is what they call movies in Japan or something. I don't know, I don't speak Japanese. This film came out in 19... Okay, I don't know the exact year, but how am I supposed to know? How am I supposed to be completely sure about my facts? You can't trust Wikipedia, and all the internet tells me is that it was either 99 or 96, depending on your country of choice, or what kind of hat you're wearing or some crud like that. It takes the story of Sonic CD, changes it a bit, and then changes it some more and a bit more, until you basically have an original story altogether. I'd say it's based after Sonic CD, though, since it has Metal Sonic as the main villain, and it was clearly inspired by the game's opening and ending animations. So, in the spirit of this upcoming Sonic movie in 2018, we're going to take a look at this Sonic movie and see if Sega can learn anything from their past. Even though this new one's being made by Sony, who also did the Smurfs and the Chipmunks movie, so... We are pretty much doomed. The film opens with a fairly intriguing introduction, and then jumps right to some owl guy flying a flaming potato. No, I don't know who he is. I've seen this movie five times and I don't know who he is. I've googled owl guy from the Sonic movie and not even the internet gives him a name. But hey, let's make him the first thing you see. Slap a label on it, Sonic the Hedgehog movie. Bam, got an owl guy. Great job. All right, we're only two seconds in. Why am I rambling about this? We see that Sonic and Tails live together in a crashed airplane, which is actually a pretty cool location for their home. You know, after they remove all the dead bodies from the wreckage, it's all good. I finally finished it! See, isn't it great? Oh yes, and Tails has a violent sinus infection. Poor guy rarely gets a good voice. He's either the kid who can't act to save his life. I have to help Amy because she's in danger. A girl who sounds like the girl. You know, the grass is practically glowing. Or someone who inhaled a bunch of bees and had an allergic reaction. Come on, you want to try it out? Not right now, thanks. But to be fair, Sonic really isn't much better. He's got one of the weirdest voices I've ever heard in a cartoon. Why well, should I have to go around cleaning up your messes? It's just that perfect mix of pitch and tone, so you just can't tell what age he's supposed to be. Or what gender, for that matter. So after Sonic and Tails don't get along for a little while... Shut up, Tails! Mr. Owl Guy tries to add another plane to the wreckage to give Sonic a message from... the president, I guess. It's a real emergency. You see, the president... Ah, yes, because I remember when I was playing through Sonic CD, the first thing that came to mind was a world controlled by a governmental hierarchy. It just made sense. He wants us to come to the presidential house right away! Yes, the presidential house, because... White House would be racist? I don't know. So they go to the presidential house, and Robotnik is there, and has taken the president and his daughter hostage, and he's a monkey, and she's a cat person. Okay, now do you understand why I find this film so odd? So Robotnik explains that he needs Sonic's help because the world is going to be destroyed. Now, stay with me, this gets a little nonsensical to say the least. Robotnik lives in another dimension in a city called Robotropolis, which was taken over by an evil robot named Metal Robotnik. The real Robotnik was forced to leave the city, and Metal Robotnik messed up the city's power supply, making it build up energy uncontrollably, and in only 24 hours, will make a giant explosion. Nobody really specifies how catastrophic it will be, and Robotnik is using the president as a hostage to force Sonic into stopping the generator before it's too late. So I'm sure a lot of you at this point are thinking, okay, fair enough, kind of makes sense, but you've got that thing in the back of your mind that keeps saying, you know, this doesn't make sense at all. 
because it doesn't? If the world is gonna be destroyed by this explosion, why is Robotnik using hostages to get Sonic to help? What does he think, Sonic just won't care? What's this? The world's going to end or not my problem? I'm gonna go fast and go sit, uh, sit on the beach by my crashed airplane where people died with my friend who's half my age, where we do pretty much nothing. Okay, this movie has more explaining to do. Also, let's say maybe the explosion will only destroy Robotropolis. Then Robotnik forcing Sonic to help would kind of make sense, but the city is already destroyed. If anything, that explosion will make things easier to rebuild, seeing as it would get rid of the rest of the rubble. Also, as seen here, Sonic suspects it might be a trap. Tell me why I should trust Robotnik when 99 out of 100 times he's lying. Yeah, because a guy named Robotnik who builds giant killer robots, claiming that a giant killer robot with the same name as him took over his city doesn't seem suspicious at all. Anyway, Sonic and Tails are off on an adventure to save the world from Metal Robotnik. Now, if you're like me, you're probably coming along just fine following what's going on, but if you come into this movie not knowing anything about Sonic, then you're probably extremely lost. What's with that intro? What's that robot? Are Sonic and Tails brothers, roommates, or, or in this case, plane mates, seeing as they live in a plane? Why do they live in a plane when there's a governed city with houses? Why is the president in the presidential house a monkey and his daughter's a cat person? Different dimensions? Why? Why? Won't the explosion be contained in one dimension? Can explosions dimension jump? Are explosions a race of beings that have developed the technology to jump dimensions? Why does Robotnik have a glowing orb? And why does it explode comedically when he pokes it with a needle that he also happened to have for some reason? Why was this all crammed in the first 10 minutes? I think we could have spent another hour on it all. Anyway, Sonic and Tails are off to Bobo Tropolis. Why do I leave things like this in the script? Do I not have five seconds to change the B to an R? They're off to Bobotropolis to stop the explosion. Now we're met with a scene that just switches between Sonic standing on the X-Tornado and Robotnik and Cat Lady playing video games. Lasts for a few minutes, then it's over, okay. Then we get some action scenes, and it's actually pretty cool looking. The animation style fits well with the fast-paced speed of the Sonic franchise, and I'd say it's the one thing that this film never fails to impress me with. Sonic and Tails eventually arrive at Robotropolis and are met by Metal Robotnik, who proceeds to literally poop on them. No joke, he just bends over, and then and, and that's about it. Enough said. Robot poop. Sounds good. Why not? Intense scene. What is this movie? Thankfully, good old Knuckles with the hat saves them from the sticky situation. You see what I did there? Sticky situation. Get it? Because after that joke, my channel is in a sticky situation. I'm losing subscribers rapidly. That's one more job I won't get paid for, but I've known you for a while, so I'll just put it on your tab, and you can pay me back later on. <laughs> wow, you botched that joke up pretty bad, Knuckles. That's one more job I won't get paid for, because I do jobs that I get paid for, but this one I didn't get paid for, because I like to make money doing jobs. But it's okay, because you're my friend. Friends, because I've known you for a while, because, you know, we're tight, we're we're cool, we're home dogs, but like, I'll put it on your tab, because you have, you know, tabs where you put the thing on the tabs, so you just pay me back at a later time, because you have a tab, because we're friends, and because you can pay me back later, and you can, you can pay me back later, because it's a tab, and that's what you do with tabs, you can pay me, pay, make your jokes shorter, Knuckles. And then Knuckles leaves them, but then he comes back, suspenseful, oh, and he can fly, Aw, yeah. But it turns out that the whole thing was a trap. Oh, shocking. And Sonic gets trapped by a machine that copies his brain into a robot, Metal Sonic. And it turns out that Metal Robotnik was just Robotnik the whole time. Go figure. Now, okay, sure, that's fine and dandy, but Robotnik, worst plan ever. First off, the hostage thing was again pointless. But I mean, if he just used the hostages to force Sonic into going into the copy machine and copying his brain to metal Sonic, then that kind of would have made more sense. But even that doesn't make sense. If you could force Sonic into doing whatever you want, then I don't know, just make him jump off the floating island or something? Also, let's say you are dumb enough to make Sonic and Tails think that they have to go to the robot city to save the world. Why try and stop them with a metal Robotnik? Doesn't that make it harder for them to fall for your trap? And why is the cat lady still in this film? She's more annoying than Chris. So Sonic and Metal Sonic fight while Tails and Knuckles head back to their dimension to find a way to stop the robot. Before they arrive, it seems that Metal Sonic kills Sonic and then heads to destroy the floating island and starts by killing the owl guy. Wouldn't have been my first choice, but okay. Old man! Old man, where are you? I'm 
behind you, Tails. You've come home early. Those are Sonic's favorite clothes, so don't blame me if he gets mad at you. He was here last night. He forced me to put on these clothes and then flew away. Wait, so Metal Sonic just took a small detour from destroying the land of the sky to find the Owl Guy and force him to wear Sonic's clothes. Wouldn't have been my first choice, but why would he do that? I think that's the biggest question, but also, why does Sonic have clothes? He doesn't wear clothes, and if he did, I doubt it would be... this. And why does Knuckles have Dragon Balls on his hat? <laughs> hey! This is the president! You listen to me, right? Stop yelling! I'm Knuckles! I'm Sonic's best friend! Yeah, yeah, definitely his best friend. Very well established. Sorry, Tails, but Knuckles said it first. You didn't say it until Sonic X. You're a few years too late. My name's Tails, and I'm Sonic's very best friend. Shut up! I'm Knuckles! I'm Sonic's best friend! I see! The land of the sky is held together by a Oh my gosh, no more lore and exposition. So long story short, Metal Sonic is going to destroy the planet's core, or something, and he fights Sonic once more. So now we can get down to the real fight! Again, it looks pretty cool with the animation, and we do get one of the greatest one-liners ever to grace the film industry. You might know everything I'm going to do, but that's not going to help you, since I know everything you're going to do! Strange, isn't it? Actually, that was pretty ridiculous. So, more fighting ensues, and these two are just yelling. No real reason besides, you know, noise. And eventually, Tails manages to override Metal Sonic's programming to make him have Sonic's personality. Yeah, I guess you can do that. And Sonic finally defeats him. But then, in an amazing coincidence, the monkey president decides to crash into an unstable ice thing that could destroy the planet. Wow. It's time for another round of I've got a crud load of questions. Why, monkey guy? Why? Could you just, just have stayed home and maybe, I don't know, not cause the end of the world by accident? If destroying the world were as easy as accidentally crashing a spaceship into an iceberg, then why didn't Robotnik do that himself? Instead of making a hostage situation to get Sonic to go to a generator to shut it down to get trapped to copy his brain to make a robot to destroy the world! How far are we into this film? Only 47 minutes? Jeez. Oh, wait. It's only 52 minutes. Okay, that's... that's nice of them. But Sonic, of course, ends up saving the president. Boo hiss. And it looks like Metal Sonic is about to fall to his doom. But then Sonic wants to save him because... I don't know, robots have souls, I guess, and Metal Sonic climbs up to him just so he can slap his hand away and then fall into the lava. Oh, but not before saying his final words. There is only one Sonic. Well, for an evil killing robot, he sounds an awful lot like a working an office job robot or running a hot dog stand robot. Pretty normal. Actually, it's not normal. If a robot is running your hot dog stand, leave. Don't eat the hot dogs. Don't eat the hot dogs. And the movie finishes off with everyone chasing Sonic for some reason and the awesome title text, of course, and the end. So that was the Sonic the Hedgehog movie, and it... Okay, so real talk. I've always said that I counted this as one of the not-so-good video game films, and I feel like I have good reason. The plot is really overly complicated, and mixing it with the short 52-minute runtime, it can feel really hard to follow. I'm watching this movie for the fifth or sixth time, and I'm really just now getting some of the plot points and reasoning behind things. Oddly enough, it doesn't feel rushed. I mean, the pacing can be a bit fast, but it does a good job with keeping the intense atmosphere. Now, normally, as I've said in the past, good characters are what can really make me like or dislike a movie or TV show. I can like a movie like Bolt that kind of has an underwhelming story for me, but has really good characters. This film just didn't do it for me. The weird voices, the odd personalities, the lack of much character interaction made Sonic, Tails, and Knuckles feel like completely different and not as likable characters. Lastly, besides the characters and story, I felt like this movie had some kind of distasteful perverted humor. There are several different versions available of this movie, but this is the lighter one, and it has lots of innuendos and even an image of the cat lady naturally feeding tiny Robotnik children. and. And if you find that kind of thing funny, then okay, fine. But I personally don't enjoy that kind of humor in a Sonic movie. Anyway, the animation is good, the mood is set really well, and the pacing didn't bother me so much. If you don't mind the complicated story or different characters than the ones that we know, go ahead and check this film out. 
Really, it won't even take up an hour of your time. Overall, an interesting idea that seems unfamiliar to Sonic fans and hard to understand for non-Sonic fans, but still, an interesting idea. Yeah, but do you like it? I mean, it's... it's, it's, it's oh, come on, you like Sonic it's, R. It's, it's, Can't have two high standards. It's just, it's there. You say you love Sonic X. You enjoyed it's, Sonic 06 for Pete's sake. Okay, fine, I like it. But not very much. After the popularity of my video on the Sonic fandom, coming soon is another video on a notorious fandom, this time, the furry fandom. Stay tuned for that, and for hanging around this video so long, allow me to tell you a nice little story. My Twitter page, Peter Kinetter, used to be called That Sheep. I named it after some kind of character I created many years ago, and it was a sheep, obviously. So, about a year ago, I decided to use my Twitter for YouTube, and I changed the name to Peter Kinetter, but the bookmark on my browser never updated the name, so now I just have a bookmark that, when I click on it, brings me to a Twitter page with Hitler posing like a supermodel. Okay, end of story. Don't forget, if you like this music, to check out DJ Bass Fox 28 who made it. You can find him in the description, and I very much suggest that you check him out. Thanks a ton for watching, and as always, have yourselves a wonderful day.